heaven, a place, a city, a home, by Ian Bounds, chapter 12, being read by Peter John Parisi's, also known as Brian Dean. Chapter 12, Knowledge of Heaven. Fasten your grips fast on Christ. Let not this clay portion of earth take up your soul. It is the portion of bastards, and ye are a child of God. Therefore, seek your father's heritage. Send up your heart to see the dwelling house and fair rooms in the new, new city. Fie, fie upon those who cry up with the world and down with conscience in heaven. Samuel Rutherford The Christian's attitude to heaven is one of knowledge. For we know that if our earthly house or this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Second Corinthians 5, verse 1 The Christian stands in regard to the certainty of death, as all the living do. A frail, fleeting, a tent is his body, the heir of death and hastening to decay. But the Christian knows that, if this earthly house were dissolved, he has a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. It is real knowledge about heaven, not a mere wish or hope so or a happy cast, but assured knowledge, a fact communicated, knowledge imparted. God has committed himself in the strongest way to give knowledge and assurance of heaven to every child of God. The Spirit himself beareth witness to our adoption and heirship. In regard to this great fact of our names being written in the book of life, we are not left in ignorance. God seals us with the Holy Spirit, which is the earnestness as well as a witness. A witness bears testimony. The earnest is both the pledge of heaven and its foretaste. Heaven, he has in conscience right realization, not in full measure, but in a measure realized. The true Christian is no agnostic. He knows some things. Heaven in this life is not to him as a large a reality, but as much a reality as it will be when his feet are on the gold pavement of the heavenly city. Heaven pervades and sweetens his whole life. His faith brings to him the very substance of things hoped for, and his hope makes the present illumination by its light and strong by its strength. Christian faith and hope make the things of heaven real, conscience tangible, experimented. How the knowledge of this home in heaven defies death, change, and misfortune. How attractive that knowledge makes it. A building of God eternal in the heavens. Human hands poisoned with decay are fairest earthly homes. The touch of human hands has defiled them. Death awaits them. Our palace across the river draws us without regret, but with delight away from our earthly tent, our clay hut. He has had but little of God, and none of the sweets of faith, who has not anticipated in the earthly, the reality, the joy of the heavenly. Are we to be tossed in uncertainty as to our home on high? Is there no blessed surety? Yes, we know. The word of God tells us so. The Spirit of God has spoken it to our hearts, and left its sweetness and its picture there. We have been examining our title deeds lately. They are heavenly deeds, signed and sealed. The house is built, the lot is numbered, all named in our bond, and we know that if our earthly house, all this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Death makes no bankrupt of the Christian. It only brings him to his inheritance. Death is the best thing that can come to the Christian. It puts him in the possession of his great fortune. It brings him to his home. We ought never to sigh. We should go through with radiance and triumph. We ought always and everywhere like the saints of old to make, to take joyfully the spoiling of our possessions, knowing in ourselves that in heaven we have a better and enduring substance. Thine earthly Sabbaths, Lord, we love, but there's a nobler rest above. To that our laboring souls aspire, with ardor pains of strong desire. No more fatigue, no more distress, nor sin nor hell shall reach the place, 
No sighs shall mingle with the songs Which wobble with immortal tongues. No rude alarms of raging foes, No cares to break the long repose, No midnight shade, no clouded sun, But sacred, high, eternal noon. O long expected day begin, Draw on these realms of woe and sin, Fain we would relieve this weary road, And sleep in death to rest with God.